Welcome to our time of ministry this morning, coming to you live from the Cave Hill Wesleyan Holiness Church in St. Michael. This is St. Michael, right? St. Michael Barbados. <laughs> it's a beautiful day across the world. Many recognize today as Palm Sunday, and uh, even though we don't have palms on the ground and around, we want to also reflect on the events leading up to that fateful time when the price for our salvation was paid, sealed and delivered for all eternity. And so I want you to stand with me this morning as we reflect on Matthew chapter 21 from verse 1 to verse 11, reading from the New King James, Matthew 21, 1 to 11, it says, now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and the colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And the very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Lift your hands with me this morning and say, Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Father, we magnify you this morning and we, we give you all the Hosannas, all the Hallelujahs, all the praise, all the glory. Because even though we, we reflect on the pain and the suffering uh, that the, the Lord Jesus went through, Ultimately, we are here and we can shout, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Blessed is you who paid the price for our salvation, who came, who died, who suffered, but gloriously rose from the grave so that we who are without hope could have hope today. And so we praise you this morning that we are here. We praise you that we can magnify your name. We praise you that we can lift you up. We praise you that we could say, Hallelujah! Glory be to the Lord, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 
We come this morning to tell you thanks for answered prayer. We come this morning to tell you thanks for intervening in ways we could not intervene. We come this morning to tell you thanks for healing, for providing, for protecting. We come this morning to tell you thanks just for the simple pleasure of saying hallelujah. Everything is not all right, but everything in you is fine because you are the God who is carrying us through our various circumstances. And so we say, hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, who is to come. The Alpha and Omega, the one who is forever. All that we could think or ask or desire. We praise you, God. We magnify the name of Jesus. We lift up Jesus over this church, over this congregation, over this community, over this nation. We say at the name of Jesus over Barbados, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. And so we declare you, Lord, today. We declare that you are over this nation. We declare that you reign. We declare that Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Hallelujah to King Jesus, King of Barbados, King of this region, King of our families, King of our lives. Oh, we praise you this morning, Father. We bless you and we give you so much of our thanks and praise. We say take all be magnified, be glorified. Oh, oh God, as we worship you, I pray, God, that your spirit will dwell rich among us. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will take complete control over the service, over every song, over the testimony, over the, over the special ministry, over your word. I pray a special anointing on our sister Shemora as she ministers. God, that she will speak directly from your throne and we, your people, will hear and be doers of your word. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for touching our children and young people especially today. That today would be a pivotal time, a pivotal day in their lives where their faith in you would be solidified and strengthened. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We join with the angels in saying hallelujah. Blessing and glory and honor and power and praise be unto our God. For the Lord our God is mighty, mighty to save, mighty to keep. Mighty to be worshipped. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Could we magnify the Lord as Sister Beverly comes? And the pastor. Hallelujah. Glad that we are in the sanctuary this morning. Thank you, Jesus. And we can say, Hosanna. Hosanna. Hooray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We cannot be physically there to spread our garments and our palm branches, but what we can do this morning is that we can honor and worship in the various forms of ministry. And so we are going to start, don't worry and stress about the peripheral. We will focus on the message and the message that the hymns will bring to us. The message, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Oh! 
Amen. Hallelujah. We'll crown him. We'll crown him. We cannot be there to spread our, to wave our palm branches and to spread our garments. But we can celebrate this morning the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's push it all up. Let's push it out. Perhaps we can sing. I love that third verse. Let every kindred, every tribe, we are ambassadors for the kingdom on this Hallelujah. terrestrial ball, Amen. this ball that we call earth. To him all majesty ascribe. Let's hear it again, Bre Brother Handy. Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball to him on majesty ascribe. and praise. Amen. 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 We will continue. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh. 
children let all the people praise thee including the children including all the boys and girls young men and women let all the people praise thee hallelujah hallelujah all right oh isn't this a wonderful thing now you know when a king comes in as I was telling the Sunday school children this morning they come with certain privileges red carpets are spread Hallelujah. and so on Hallelujah. right this was an appreciation by the people and this morning we join in that appreciation but very often you see the army as well the army is there the battalions are there and the gun salutes and the fanfare oh this morning how much more we want to give our fanfare to the king of kings and the lord of lords we're going to sing an old song, Sound the Battle Cry. See the voice now. Sound the Battle Cry. See the voice now. Raise the standard high for the Lord. Gird your armor on. Stand firm, everyone. Press your cause upon this holy Shout the loud Hosanna, rise 
soldiers. Amen, soldiers. Amen, soldiers. And Mary, if you were in Putin's army, you can stand up like that. You would really have to march. You belong to Jesus' army. So we need to see some movement from these young people up in here. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's see on those. Amen. Amen. You will hear your name streamed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. And we focus, we meditate on that, on that name we call Jesus. We meditate on the giver of life. We meditate on who he is today. We meditate, we meditate. We give homage. As we give homage and we give praise. All hail King Jesus. All hail Emmanuel. King of kings. Lord of lords. Bright morning star. Jesus, there is something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim, kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something, this morning church, there's something, there's something about that name. There's healing in that name. There's virtue in that name. There's forgiveness in that name. In that name. Jesus. There is something about.
your hands with me as we sing again. Kings and kingdoms. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. But there's something about that name. Wherever you are, just shout the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, there is something about the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Kings and kingdoms will rise and fall. Governments will come and go. Nations will change. Borders will change. The scripture tells us heaven and earth shall pass away. But the name of Jesus remains a foundation forever. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is rejoicing in Jesus' name. We can do things in a lot of names. You could go into certain parts of the country and call a particular name and, and you get things done. But there is only one name that is above every name. That it doesn't matter where you are at that name, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Song is all right. For he is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, Jesus is Lord. 
Jesus is Lord. Whatever situation you're facing, whatever issue you have, Jesus Christ is Lord. If you have people in Ukraine, tell them Jesus is Lord. If you have people in Gaza, tell them Jesus is Lord. If you have people in Israel, tell them Jesus is Lord. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. It's such a wonderful privilege to be able to magnify him and to give him glory. And my hope and prayer is that as a church, as a community, as a nation, we don't lose sight of who is Lord. We have so many people that want to be Lord among us. So many people that want to be recognized and lifted up. But there is only one man who said, and if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto himself, unto me. And he is Jesus. And to this day, there is no greater army than those who call on the name of the Lord Jesus and submit to his will. Nothing can defeat us. Amen? So we walk in victory. We walk in power. We walk in healing. We walk knowing that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. If you're with us for the first time, just raise your hand. If you're with us for the first time and you're following on YouTube, just type that into the chat. First time, and we want to celebrate you. It's good to see those of you who are with us all the time, most of the time. Um, it's good to see some of our, so many of our children in church this morning. And it's our hope and prayer that we continue to encourage them to be in the house of the Lord. We believe that this is where they will learn good morals, great ethics, and the right approach to life. Amen? So we want to thank you for being here. We want to remind you that our Sunday school is on Sundays at 9 o'clock. We are trying our best not to interrupt our Sunday school time. And I believe it's paying dividends. Our scholars are recognizing that we are always here for Sunday school. And we want to encourage you, whether you're in this congregation now or listening, if you can, make it a priority to have your children, grandchildren, niece, nephew, and yourself be here for a time of teaching on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and then church service at 10.30. This coming Monday at 10 o'clock, we have intercessory prayer, and uh, that has been and continues to be a joy. And to those who support it, we bless the Lord. God is ministering and moving. Um, we got a testimony on Wednesday of God moving immediately after the intercessors had prayed. And we want to thank God. And we know that God continues to move in all of our lives as we lift him up. Amen. Wednesday, we have in-person prayer and Bible study. It's 6 o'clock here on a Wednesday. So we will not be online, I think. And we would be here, and we want to encourage you to come to be a part of our in-person session at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. Friday at 8 in the morning is our Good Friday service, and we invite you to be a part as we come again to celebrate the lifting up of the Lord Jesus Christ. We hope to finish uh, within our usual one hour and four to five minutes so that by 10 o'clock you're home um, enjoying some cool cool breeze and relaxing and those of you who visit other churches online you will have the opportunity to tune in to the four or five more congregations that you follow on sunday morning we do have sunday school at nine o'clock and then our service starts at ten thirty, and we encourage you to join us again friday evening at 6 p.m at the carrington's wesleyan holiness church in Welch Village, is it? Welches. I get confused with Welch Village and Welches. And, and Welches, there is a district youth presentation, and I cannot remember the theme. My, the cross still bleeds. 
And we invite you to be there. Um, adults, um, $20. I think they're raising funds for um, Congress, yes. Uh, children, 5 to 12, uh, $10. And people like me, under five years, free. Children under five years free. I think it's going to be a wonderful family um, presentation, and I would encourage all of us who can make it to be a part of Carrington's on Friday evening at 6 o'clock. Now, my technology is failing me, so tech team, help me. Um, Camp Firelight, VBS 2024. It's from September 2nd to the 8th, and we want to encourage you to be a part. Um, there are a number of positions that we need to fill, and we want to make sure that we have all the bases covered. If you're interested in being a part, whether you're a part of this assembly or you're a believer fellowshipping somewhere else, and you would like to play a part in our time of teaching for our children, the children in this community, please indicate that to Sister Francine or Brother Emmanuel, and we will organize to make sure that you are a part. We are still appealing for support. We have been promised the support, and we know that God is going to come through. Uh, but if you can help us in any way, whether it's snacks or financially, Make that known and we will organize to respond to that. Amen? Before that, however, we have our uh, General Youth Congress. Um, it's from July 21st to the 26th. I think I have the dates right. Um, no, I don't. Uh, it's in July. And it's the 22nd to the 26th. 21st to the 26th. I got it right. It's at the Wyndham Hotel, and uh, the cost at this time is 3,900 Barbados dollars. If you can, and you can help us with that, for one or two persons, or three or four or five, we welcome that. And uh, when we are picking up today's offering, you will see our bank account information on the screen. You can transfer that. I know that some people that are listening to me can afford to sponsor four and five of our young people. And I challenge you to trust the Lord, sponsor them, and God is going to respond to you a hundredfold as you give in faith into the lives of our young people. We have a lovely set of young people in this church. I can speak about this church because this is where I am now. And they will be eternally grateful to all of you who assist them in their walk. Amen? I want to apologize for... Um, we had some difficulties last month with our care packages, and they were not distributed as usual. We have rectified that, and, and this month we should be in a better position to, to do that. So um, for those persons who were affected, we I offer apologies on behalf of this local assembly, and we are working to ensure that that is a thing of the past. Amen? But for those of you who have been uh, contributing to our good chair basket and contributing to us being able to minister to the people in this community, we want to thank you very much, and we want to pray that God would continue to bless and keep and watch over you. Amen? We have birthdays in March. Um, a couple of them are gone. And I suspect the birthdays for the loudest people in church are gone, so we don't have to think about those that are gone. Um, and um, we have a couple of them that are coming up, and we want to celebrate with them. Um, anything be before the 18th and up to the 18th, that, that group is sorted. We don't have to call any names and so on. But uh, from the 22nd going forward, we could... Um, I see somebody shaking their head as if they disagree with me. Uh, but, you know, you could continue to celebrate in March. Uh, we are just going to um, celebrate with you. Amen? Um, it's nice to see people responding in the group chat. And if you 
are not a part of it, just indicate so that we could include you. There are some announcements that are put there that are not put, not announced from the pulpit simply because we cannot make all the announcements. And so um, in the group chat, you will get a little bit more details, but we want to celebrate with those who are celebrating and really bless the Lord for you as we go forward. God has been good to us. God has been good to us. Has he healed anybody? Has he healed anybody? Has he touched anybody? Has he protected anybody? Has he watched over anybody? We want to give him thanks. And so even as, the, as Brother Emmanuel comes to minister to us, I just want to remind us that things are happening, but God is in control. We are in some in many cases, we're struggling. We want to know what is going to happen. There are things that are happening around us, things that are affecting us. But I want to encourage us. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's keep our eyes on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he has promised that he will walk with us through every stage of our lives. The Lord bless you. Continue to have a wonderful service. Um, before uh, I minister, um, uh, the pastor forgot to tell you that my talk is on Tuesday at 7 online. And this part 2 of Is Online Church the Way to Go? Is Online Church the Way to Go? Part 2. And uh, we are looking at a different perspective. I'm sure that it would excite you. Join us on Tuesday at 7 online, and you will have the link shortly. And I'm doing a poem this morning, and today is the day that Jesus sealed it for us that we can make the transition. That we can become new creatures in Christ Jesus. And that is what my poem is about. It's about the transition. You're transitioning from the old man to the new man. Is called the transition. Let me go from the shadows of your night so I could see the illuminated light charting a path that exfoliates my putrid mind and exorcises the demons of the past that had me blind. Liberate me from the strands of your tentacles like an octopus Straddling my body with prickles, leaving flowers on my grave to smell, but only in hell. For years you intoxicated me with deceit, drunken me with the lure of conceit. But time must be longer than twine, cause your wine now tastes like brine and is no way fine. Your gifts did sparkle and shine at times, but I failed to visualize the signs of more in the mortar than the pestle or the flattering noise you kept like a big old empty vessel. It's time to cut my ties and tie my cut of festering lies so healing can begin to start the process that sets me apart to overturn the golden apple cart. A brand new man, that's who I am. Blessings on me like sands from the sea. Can't count them all, some big, some small. But I just want a ball for feeling like 10 feet tall. I'm so glad I'm on a new track, got no intention of turning back. So all you haters and you detractors, get out my way because I'm here to stay. Like a big able rock on a house. That's the transition. Thank you. and offerings and even as they do let's bow our heads precious and eternal father who art in heaven we your people present our offerings to you 
may they be acceptable in thy sight, and may they be used for the enhancement of their an advancement of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer unto you the sacrifices of Pleasant good morning, everyone. Let's just say a word of prayer. Almighty God, we honor you today. We give you thanks, Lord, and we give you praise because you are indeed a good God. Father God, I ask that you would search our hearts this morning. And as this word goes forth, Father, I pray that we would be receptive. Mighty God, I pray that you would block out the distractions, God, and your people would hear what you want them to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Anybody grateful for life this morning? Yeah. Amen. So, as you know, today is commonly celebrated as Palm Sunday. And it is an important day in our Christian calendar. It bears much significance because it is the beginning of what we call the Holy Week. And it is where we reflect on the love and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Savior. It is the prelude to the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. Palm Sunday commemorates his entry into Jerusalem, where he was greeted by the crowds, waving palm branches, and shouting, Hosanna, as you would have sung. It is a significant day. It symbolizes Jesus' role as our Messiah and King. Pastor would have read from Mark this morning, I believe, Matthew. But I will be looking at this text from the book of Luke. Luke gives an account of what took place on Palm Sunday in chapter 19, verses 28 to 44. And it reads... Let's read together. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, 
he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, say, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. And when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. The stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, Had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Amen. That's the word. And as usual, I like to read and dissect so that you can understand what we just read. So Jesus here is going up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a place, sorry, Jerusalem is a place where Jesus is going to be rejected. And he is on this journey. He had just left Jericho and he had just healed Lazarus and did a, a, a lot of other miracles. But most significantly, Jerusalem is a place where Jesus is going to be rejected. As he approached Bethage and Bethany, we are told that these were some small villages near Jericho Road, and it was east of Ju Jerusalem, just over the Mount of Olives. As he approached Bethage and Bethany at the hill, he sent his two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt, or what we know as a donkey. I will not refer to it as any other name which no one has ever written, ridden, untie it and bring it here. So here we see this action of Jesus telling his disciples to go ahead and look for this donkey. It is a fulfillment of the prophecy in Zechariah 9.9. So he tells them to go ahead and, you know, untie this donkey. And if anyone asks you, tell them that the Lord needs it. So they did just that. They brought back the donkey and they began, well, the disciples threw their cloaks on the donkey and Jesus hopped on. The people were spreading their cloaks in the road and from my research, it says that spreading clothes where a person sat or walked was a way to honor special dignitaries, as was done for Jehu when he was acclaimed king of Israel in 2 Kings 9.13. So they came to a place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives and the whole crowd began to joyfully praise God in loud voices because of the miracles he had done. And they said, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. The crowd is shouting Psalms 118 verse 26, which is messianic. They are announcing the arrival of Jesus the king. But remember, they're going to Jerusalem and Jerusalem already had a king. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd told Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. They're making too much noise. And his response was, if they keep quiet, 
the stones will cry out. And Jesus saw the city of Jerusalem and he wept. He said, if you, even you, had only known on this day, what would bring you peace? But now it is hidden from your eyes. Jesus is disclosing his agenda. And I'm just going to spend a little time talking about the different agendas in this scenario. He has come to bring peace. The Jews enjoyed a temporal, though imperfect peace under Roman rule. But such peace cannot be found, cannot be secured forever. And due to their unbelief, many Jews did not open their eyes to see Christ as Messiah or recognize his coming as the time of God's visitation and offer of salvation. And this, my friends, is the tragedy of rejecting Jesus' agenda. So at, at first glance, it may appear as though the multitudes and the Messiah, they were all on the same page, but they were not. They were far apart. The mere fact that Jesus burst into tears while the crowd is around him cheering that there are two polar opposites. This clearly shows that there are two different agendas at play on this day. And what I like about Luke is that it enables us to see these radically different agendas at work. It shows us the tragedy that eventually comes to all those who reject Jesus' agenda in favor of their own. So what was the multitude's agenda on that day? They claim to acclaim Jesus as their king. The recent raising of Lazarus from the dead and all the other miracles left no doubt in their minds that Jesus was their long-awaited Messiah. And that is so. The Messiah, on the other hand, he came to proclaim the true nature of his messiahship. So the multitude, they were correct in proclaiming him as the Messiah, but they were wrong to think of him in terms of a political Messiah. They, if they had read more carefully the Old Testament prophecies, they would have understood that their Messiah was to be spiritual in nature, offering deliverance from sin in Isaiah 53. Even the fact that Jesus was riding on a lowly colt indicated that he was not to be regarded as the typical conquering king, as Sister Beverly would have mentioned, you know, how we treat dignitaries when they're in town. But rather, he came as one who was meek and lowly. His second agenda was to force the hand of the religious leaders. The religious leaders wanted him dead. But they preferred to wait until after the Passover because of the significance of that. So they said that after the Passover, we would just get rid of him very quietly. Nobody has to know. But Jesus had a different timetable. He was the Lamb of God who had come to take away sin. Therefore, it was essential that he be sacrificed on the Passover, not after. And by evoking this public display of people all around, the crowd coming in, Jesus forced the hands of the religious leaders, and they concluded that something had to be done right away, immediately. So therefore, they were forced to adopt Jesus' timetable. There are powerful and compelling truths we have to consider in the words of Jesus. In verses 42 and 44. And the reason why I chose Luke's gospel is because it is unique in that there is no parallel text to f verses 42 and 44. You won't find it in Matthew and you won't find it in Mark. You can check. Now, Jesus wept before Lazarus' tomb, and here in the midst of cheering, Jesus is weeping. And in tears of joy, what a strange sight. He wept because he knew the city of Jerusalem would reject him. You think it's easy going to a place and you know that you're, you're not going to be accepted well? So in his mind, he's probably thinking, Lord, it's going to be rough. And he may have shed a few tears. He wept because the city of Jerusalem had been given an opportunity to embrace the spiritual messiahship of the Lord Jesus and they rejected it. And because of this, judgment lay ahead. 
Saints, that's, that's the issue. When we fail to accept Jesus' agenda, it culminates in judgment. So, now that I have delved into the scripture and I have dissected it for you, I want to focus our attention on verses 30 and to 32. And that reads, And Jesus said to his disciples, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a cold tied there. No one has ever ridden it. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say to them, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it and did just what Jesus told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. Turn to your neighbor and just tell them very quickly, the Lord has need of you. And that, my friends, is the topic of my sermon this morning. The Lord has need of you. During 1939 to 1945, there was an outbreak of war, and we know it to be World War II. We are told that it was the biggest and deadliest war of history. It involved about 30 countries, and it sparked the 1939 Nazi Germany invasion to Poland. At some point, Britain entered the war. They joined against the Nazi Germany, and they needed manpower. I could imagine the news broadcast in that time flooding the British Caribbean colonies, saying, Britain needs you. Britain began recruiting persons from the Caribbean, and around 10,000 soldiers from the, British, from the British Caribbean fought for Britain in those times. Another 6,000 joined the Royal Air Force. And I'm particularly drawn to the phrase, Britain needs you, because essentially these men and women were asked to sacrifice their lives and their freedom for Britain. Britain needed them. And that is the same thing that is happening in the kingdom of God. We are chosen, and God has need of us. All of us will be enlisted for service in God's kingdom. And there is room in the Lord's army for all of us. Whatever your skill set may be, whatever your talents may be, I am here to submit to you today that there is room in God's kingdom for you. So, usually when dignitaries or people of high esteem visit a country, they, they bring a whole entourage. You have the security detail, you have the police outriders, and you know, people must know that somebody important is in town. A few weeks ago, St. Vincent, my home country, hosted the CELAC conference. CELAC is a regional forum that brings together all the countries of Latin, um, the Latin Americas and Caribbean. They bring them together. Now, there were prime ministers and other officials in town. You would have thought, that it was election season because, I mean, the government, they patched up some of the long outstanding swimming pools called potholes, and they sent the road gang to clean up the roads. So you would have thought this was an election season. That's usually what happens at elections. I know that don't happen here. But the country looked clean, and it looked clean because we wanted to welcome those dignitaries from overseas. We wanted them to see the beauty of our country. So the welcome is different. But Jesus here, the Messiah, he asked two of his disciples to go and fetch a donkey. This, my friends, teaches us a lesson or two in the humility of our king. See your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey. Now the manner of Jesus' entry underscores, like I said, his humility. And we can take a page from that because, you know, some of us, we may not have chosen a donkey. He chose a simple donkey rather than a majestic horse, which was customary for kings and conquerors in that time. You see, true greatness often comes from humility and service rather than power and prestige. Brothers and sisters, on this Palm Sunday, 
Jesus, that Palm Sunday, Jesus was ro rolling into Jerusalem on his way to the Passover. And this is the first time he publicly accepts his cl the claim of Messiah. Normally, he would tell people, be quiet. Nobody has to know that I'm coming through. But this time, on this occasion, this is the only time he allows people to honor his messiahship. So the stage is set. He understands the assignment. He understands his agenda, but something is missing. He needs a donkey. And this assignment would be incomplete if Jesus did not have something to ride on. Church, it is interesting that Jesus does not choose a horse like I said. He chooses a donkey. And this, I said before, fulfilled the prophetic word in Zechariah 9.9. 9. Now a donkey was one of the most common animals of the day. It's not anybody's first choice for an assignment such as this. We know donkeys. I don't know if Barbados has a lot of them here, but um, there was one um, that I was familiar with back home because we live very much in the mountains. So there was one that we knew. <laughs> They're very hyper. They're very stubborn. They are loud. When they bray, you could hear them miles away. We would be in our house and we would hear that donkey further up in the hills. They have long ears and they would often drape them over their ears. Sorry, long ears, which are often draped to cool their blood. But yet, they were very, very hard workers. When Jesus needed something to take him into Jerusalem, he chose this. Not just any donkey, though. He chose the one tied up at Bethage, Bethany. And I know we would hate to admit it, but... We have much more in common with this donkey than we think. Now, I am not calling you a donkey. We can be stubborn at times. And sometimes people can treat us as the lowest of lowest. Sometimes people can see us as common. Sometimes we can be loud. And we can be hardworking, so diligent, and still overlooked. And those are the ones Jesus is calling to his kingdom in these times. I am submitting to you. Just as Jesus needed that donkey, he needs you. God, why would you want me? Why you want me, Andy? Why? Have you ever asked yourself, why would God want someone like you? Perhaps you have been perplexed by this invitation because we know ourselves. We doubt this invitation because we know our faults. We know our failures. We know our flaws. All our idiosyncrasies, we know them. And many times we wrestle with God. We say, Lord, I, I hear that invitation, but... I am not sure you really want to call me. Have you ever been there? Because I have. You go back and forth and you say to him, uh, you remind him of all the sins you would have committed and, and the sins that he already forgave you for, but you want to bring them up just, just because you want to make your case. You remind him of, oh, brother, brother Neil in the back, he's, he's much more eloquent than I am, so maybe you should choose him. And we give him re all these recommendations of people who would be better qualified than us. I know in church you, you have to look a certain way. We have to look like we have it together. And we fool people really well because you come to church and we, we look all polished and refined. But let's be honest. Sometimes our spiritual lives are not as pristine as others would assume. We pray, but we don't pray like we should. We read our Bibles, but we don't read it as often as we should. We serve, but we serve after groaning and complaining and grumbling and... You see, we have mastered the art of trying to look the holiest and most sanctimonious. But there are moments when we look to God in despair and we say, God, 
I am not sure I am ready to be used by you. But can I tell you something this morning? God knows you better than you know yourself. He sees you. He sees the things that you don't see within yourself. And he's saying to you, he needs you. Even in your mess, even in, in, in what you think is not perfect, he's saying to you, I still need you. Because what I'm going to do in your life, I'm going to clean you up, fix you up, and then send you out to declare Christ to your friends, to your family, to the world. And just like he saw the donkey in Bethage, this inconsequential donkey by the side of the road, God sees you. And he has need of you. And I wish somebody would be honest and say, I don't have it all together. I don't. I'm not perfect. I don't dot all my I's and cross all my T's. But I know the kingdom of God needs me. The good news about Jesus is that he understands. And he still gives us the privilege to be a part of his kingdom. Why does Jesus send his disciples to bring this donkey? You're asking yourself, Shamora, why would God need? You don't understand, and I have been through some things. I have done some things. Why would God need me? And just like Jesus needed that donkey back then, he needs you for three reasons. One, so that he can release you, so that he can reclaim you, and so that he can reform you. So, Jesus sent two of his disciples to this donkey. He says, go and gather me a donkey that is tied up. And if we use our imagination, I'm sure that they may have had many donkeys back then, but he was very specific. And the disciples would have known exactly which donkey he was talking about. The one that is tied up in Bethany. Remember I said that God needs us because he wants to release us. That's the one he wanted. It's interesting that Jesus chose an animal that was not free. You didn't get that. Jesus chose an animal that was restricted. It was limited. It was stuck. It was tied to a rope. I, I can testify. Sometimes I feel stuck. I feel restricted. The donkey is connected to something. It is connected to a rope, and it, won't, it can't go where it wants to because it is prohibited. And I know I'm not the only one who sometimes feel this way. There is sin, and sometimes we find ourselves stuck in sin. So this donkey was stuck, and that was the one God wanted. Brothers and sisters, Jesus knows our struggles. He knows our problems. He knows our pains. He knows when we feel stuck and tied up and wrapped up and tangled up in some sin that we can't seem to get out of. He knows when the cares of this world are weighing us down. He knows and he sees how hard it gets, how we are trying to figure out this thing called life, but we are stuck. He sees when we feel hopeless and he sees us in our bondage, in our limited mobility, yet he still says, I want you. Isn't that amazing? We serve a savior that does not only go for the ones who have it all together. And I am glad because then he wouldn't look for me. He goes for the ones who doesn't have it all together. Sometimes it's important that we pull back the curtains and we look over our lives and we see where God has brought us from. I, I, I do it sometimes and I can't help but shed some tears because I know I was tied up. I was restricted. I was in bondage, but Jesus came and he freed me. And that is the good news, brothers and sisters. He'll always come searching for you. Just like he went and found that donkey through his disciples, he's always going to come searching for you. The donkey couldn't come to Jesus because it was restricted, as I said. But he went to it. He's searching for someone today. 
and he'll come and reach you even in your mess. Even in that inconsequential place where you think, oh, nobody sees me. I hear putting in all this work, but Lord, nobody can see me up in here. He will find you. He knows you better than your restrictions, and he knows you better than being tied up and limited. You are better than that. So he sent two disciples. Brothers and sisters, in this Christian life, God will always send the people to help us who, who, who need to help us, who need to loose us, who need to untie that rope like the two disciples untie the ropes for the donkey. God will always put the right people in your life for the right time. He works through hu the human agency of relationships. Relationships are important to him. And some of us are to celebrate the people God has placed in our lives to get us loose, to release us. Maybe after this sermon you go home and you can reflect and you can think about all the people who God may have put in your life who helped to make your life so much easier. Aren't you glad that in critical moments in your life, God would send who you need? He may send a church mother to the motherless. He may send a pastor. He may send a prayer partner just when you need somebody to back you up in prayer. He may send a friend. And that's why it's so important to declare Christ to your friends because in doing so, you are helping someone. You are releasing someone from bondage. And I wish somebody could testify and say, that is my testimony because there are some people God placed in my life I am grateful for. I have gone to some places and I have wondered, Lord, how am I going to get this thing figured out? How am I going to settle in? But the Lord places the right people in the right time. And I am grateful. God will send the right ones, the right type of believers, the, the right spouses, the right um, neighbors to live near you. The right disciples to help free you from your situation. And I appreciate this passage because it tells us that God, when God has need of us, he wants to release us so that we in turn can release others. He needs us so that we can be reclaimed. The interesting thing about the text is that the donkey was tied up, and this implies that it already had an owner. You won't just find an, a donkey um, who has no owner out on the street there, um, not tied up. The owner of this donkey chose to restrict him. <laughs> Even though this donkey was tied up, the real issue was that he had a master and it was the master who was restricting him. That master was not Jesus. You don't get tied up in something or someone. You don't get tied up unless something or someone is controlling you. Unless you're under some sort of supervision. Saints, when you have the wrong master, it doesn't matter if you are well fed. That donkey probably was well fed. It doesn't matter if you're well paid. When you have the wrong master, your life will still be restricted. That donkey had a master. You will never reach your full potential when you have the wrong master. And in this moment, Jesus recognizes this donkey is tied up. He has the wrong owner and he needs to reclaim the life of this donkey. So Jesus is telling the disciples, listen, when you go up there, there's going to be a problem because this donkey belongs to somebody. And this is what I need you to tell them. Tell them that the Lord needs it. All right, let, let's put this another way. Let's say, Brother Hendy, you're about to step in your car. And I come up to you and I take your car keys and I say to you, I go in your car and I sit down by the person, the driver's side and I say to you, Brother Hendy, um, give me the keys. And you ask me, Mishmura, why, why am I giving you my keys? And I respond and I tell you, because the Lord has need of this vehicle. You will think I need to go down to Black Rock Psychiatric Hospital, right? Because it's time. My time has come. How about your house? 
you're paying this mortgage and you're bending your back breaking, trying to, to make payments at the end of the month. And I come over to your house and I go into your fridge and I take out what I want. As a matter of fact, I like the couch, the set. So I say, I'm going to walk with this. And you ask me, Shamora, what are you doing? Uh, the Lord needs these things. That is how ludicrous it sounded. But that is the instructions Jesus gave his disciples. He said, when you go to Bethany, somebody is going to resist you. The owner of this donkey is going to ask, where are you doing? Tell them the Lord has need of it. I know we saved and sanctified, but some of us will be rolling up our sleeves and catching a case one time because, uh-uh, not this house that I pay in for, I trying to break my back every month, trying to pay for, because we're ready for war. And I love the Lord, but that's not going to work. He didn't tell me what he told you, so I'm just going to wait until he tells me that you need it. Sometimes, church, we have to reclaim some things in our lives, simply based in the name of the Lord. We have to reclaim our, our country in Jesus' name. We have to reclaim our marriages, our children, our schools in Jesus' name. And sometimes, some enemies try to, to take our houses, our finances, our mind. But I submit to you today, we ought to reclaim them. What belongs to us in Jesus' name? And this is what Jesus teaches us in this text. We don't have to respond with any long epistle. You know, some people like to give some long speeches in Parliament. We don't have to give them those speeches. All we have to tell them, the Lord needs my family, and I claim them back in the name of Jesus. Sometimes when we look back at our before Christ days, our BC days, I am glad that Jesus found me. I'm glad he said, my child, I have need of you. Because Jesus needs us so that we can be released and that we can go in turn and release others. Bring them back to him, just like he would have done for this donkey. He needs us so that we can be reformed. That's the third point. Some books in the Bible don't mention this part, but Luke is very clear when when they brought the donkey to Jesus, it had never been ridden. And it had never had the weight of someone on its back. Jesus then summoned the donkey so he can walk alongside it to go up into Jerusalem. In order for this donkey to fulfill its purpose, Jesus had to ride on it. And that is critical. Because if you know the animal, you know that it is stubborn. It would resist and research shows that until a donkey gets comfortable with you, it will buck and bite at you. So you can't just hop on it and ride like Jesus did. The natural thing would have been to train this donkey over a period of days, let it get used to the weight, and so Jesus can do what he had to do. But Jesus took a calculated risk by deciding to use a donkey that had never, ever been ridden on. That donkey would have to change its natural behavior immediately in order for Jesus to ride on it. But when it got before him, the disciples threw their cloak and Jesus rode it. This donkey teaches us that when we get in the presence of Jesus, there is something about his presence that changes us and transforms us. It doesn't matter what our idiosyncrasies are, what our normal behavior would be. When we get in the presence of God, we're not the same. And that's why when some people see us after, you know, accepting Christ and they see us on the worship team, they see us on, in the choir, and they'll be like, Dan the same Shemura. It's not. Because Jesus got on the inside, and he cleaned me up really good, and my old dirty ways on them, Jesus set me free. He reformed me. Isn't that amazing? Man can't do it, you know. So let them come to the church and say, but look at she, she playing holy and not. Yeah, I'm playing holy and no. Because I have a relationship with God and I know what he has done in my life. So therefore, I am reformed. I am not the same. And that is how it ought to be. We're not supposed to be on the same level before Christ when we come into Christ. It may take some time. We may, we may not get there immediately. But when we get there, People should see the difference. People should see Christ in us. And let's be honest. 
this donkey, the purpose of this donkey that he had to fulfill was not the most glamorous. He had to bear the weight of Jesus on his back. Every assignment in your life will not be glamorous saints. Some assignments, whew, some assignments would come with criticism. Even from uh, among us. What's she doing up there? I don't understand. Pastor, some assignments would be hard. But there is purpose in everything God does. And just to be a part of the parade, this donkey was, was chosen. God's plan should be enough for us. So I'm closing because I, I don't generally preach very long. So I said, God, God has called us. He has need of us. And he needs us for three reasons. He needs us so that he can release us. He can set us free just as he did that donkey. He called us so that he can reclaim us back to himself. We're stuck in our sin and our bad ways. The Lord has called us back to him. And he has called us to reform us, to change us, to clean us up on the inside. So brothers and sisters, these two agendas on that first Palm Sunday is still at work today. Only Jesus alone can make peace between us and God. And the same thing he wanted to do for Jerusalem is the same thing he want to do, wants to do for us today. So the palm leaves are waving. The donkey is walking on coats as a sign of honor and respect. And the multitude, they're honoring this donkey. Sorry, the multitude are not honoring the donkey. They're throwing their coats on the donkey's feet because of who is on the donkey's back. The arrival of Jesus in Jerusalem was a divine visitation. And Jesus wants to do the same for us today. He wants to visit you exactly where you're at. Don't miss this moment. This is a serious moment. The donkey was released. He was reclaimed. And he was reformed. So that he could fulfill his mission to carry Jesus into Jerusalem. Don't be like the people of Jerusalem. Don't reject the Messiah today. He has need of you so that he can release you, reclaim you, and reform you. Change your life completely so that we in turn can go out and declare Christ to our family, our friends, and the world. We can, Jesus was visiting them and they rejected them. They rejected the agenda to bring peace. They didn't recognize it. And Jesus wants to bring that same peace in our lives today. No one else can do it. Would you let him? I just want us to close our eyes for a minute as the pastor comes. I would just reflect, just think back over our lives. Maybe you've been saved for a long time. And you think you need to, you know, recommit that li your life to Christ. You're not where you used to be. And you want to go back there. You say, Shamora, I have really done some bad things. I'm telling you, God wouldn't want me. But he wants you. He needs you. Because there's a world out there that needs you. So, as Reverend Jones come, I leave you with that word. Amen. Amen. If you're ready to be re released or reclaimed or reformed, stand where you are with us this morning. Let's pray. It may be something that is a thorn in your flesh, something that is affecting you in in ways that we can't explain. God is calling, calling you. He wants to release you. He wants to reclaim you as his child. And he wants to reform you, reform your thinking, reform your heart, reform your entire being. Are you willing to be reformed today, to re be reclaimed?
This is a serious thing. Because God is calling us to our purpose. And it's only he who has the ability to shatter the chains, to break whatever is holding you and tying you to that past, and to cause you to walk in victory. Are you ready this morning? Father and God, we thank you. We thank you for your word to us today. We thank you for this, your child who stands before you, releasing her life into your hand, allowing you to reclaim her, allowing the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus to release her, and allowing you through your Holy Spirit to reform her even now. We thank you for this process that you are working in her life now. And for those that are following, that, have, that are making that commitment, we thank you for breaking the chains over their lives and releasing your freedom over them. We thank you because today salvation has come to this life and all those that are watching and following. Today, God, you have revealed yourself to them in a powerful way that you're the God who cares. You're the God who singles them out as individuals and calls them to yourself. And so we thank you today for your grace over their lives and our lives. And for those in this congregation this morning that are still trying to make up their minds about what to do, I pray, God, that your word today will so resonate in their hearts that by the end of this day, they will make that decision to allow you to release them and reclaim them and reform them. We seal their commitment with the blood of the Lord Jesus this morning. And we thank you, God, that we can rejoice in them. I pray, God, for Sister Shamora that you would continue to strengthen her and cause your will to be done over her life. I rebuke the plan of the enemy to cause her any harm. And I thank you, God, for the blood covering, the powerful covering of the blood of the Lord Jesus over her and Greg as together they minister unto you. We thank you for your release over their lives. And we thank you for your blessings. As a people, as we leave this sanctuary this morning, we leave knowing, God, that you are calling us, that you love us, that you care for us, we leave knowing that we are special to you. And it doesn't matter what we are experiencing. Your word comes directly to us to bring us life and health and healing. And so we rejoice this morning. And we thank you for our sister and all those who would have made that commitment today. We release them into your hands for your kingdom and for your good pleasure. And we thank you for all that you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you.
keep you and watch over you as you go through the rest of today. And may we continue to avail ourselves to the Lord for his kingdom and his glory. Have a beautiful Sunday. <laughs>